In the previous videos, we have used the root middleware and the map controller root method to help us to do task number one, which is mapping. And we have used the action method to handle the request. Now it's time to return the HTML. So let's go to our code and over here and let's look at our controllers here. So currently we're only returning strings. We're not actually returning HTML. Let me first of all delete this parameter. We're not going to use it. Let's actually start adding views. There are many ways to add a view. You can add it manually, but there's a simple way to add it, which is by right clicking on the action method and then click on add view. Let's add a empty reader view and let's make sure that the name of the view corresponds to the name of the action method and then click on add. Now you can notice that a views folder is just created and then a home folder is created. After that, the index.cshtml file is created. Just like by convention, a controllers folder should contain all of the controllers. A views folder should contain all of the views. And then you will have a, another subfolder here that corresponds to the name of the controller. So in this case, we have the home controller. So therefore, Visual Studio Do automatically created this home folder. And under that, it created this index.cshtml file. Any file that ends with cshtml is considered a reader view file. And the name of this file is named as index that corresponds to the action method inside our controller over here. Now we can add HTML inside the view. So we can start with a very simple HTML. I just, because I just want to demonstrate how this works. So we can add just like before, like welcome to home page, add a line break, and then add some descriptions here. This is our new home. After that, let's go back to our controller over here. You can see that this is still returning a string. We want to return the HTML that is defined in this reader view template over here. So how do we do that? We can change this return type to I action result, and then we can change this to use the view method. And that's it. So let's give it a try. You can see that HTML is being displayed in our homepage. So how does this controller know which view to return without actually specifying? Right? This is all by convention, just like I mentioned just now that we have this home controller corresponds to this home folder. We have the index method corresponds to this name of this view file. By convention, if we don't specify the name of the view, then it's going to look for the view name that corresponds to the action method name. In this case, we do have one over here. Therefore, SPDNI core returns the HTML inside this file. However, you can specify the name of the view. So inside this method here, you can see that it has different signatures. The third one has a view name over here. So we can specify the view name like this index. And then if we run the application again, it will still show the index HTML template. And if I change this to, let's say index one, then we have to change this to index one. So this will still make the application work. As you can see, the page is still loaded. However, in this case, we delete name of the view, then it won't work because it's going to try to find a reader view file that has the index name. This file currently is changed to index one. Therefore, it's not going to work. If we try to run it, then it's going to complain. And error message is very informative. You can see that it's looking for the view index inside the following locations and it cannot find it. So let's change this back to index. Now, if we run it again, we will be able to see the same home page. And let's go back to our controller now. You can see that we're returning I action result, but our method here returns a view result. So what is the relationship between I action result and a view result? So by looking at this name, you can tell that this is interface that represents the return type for any action method, right? Because the name is action result. 
and there are a lot of different result types. In this case, the view method here returns a view result. And if we go to take a look at the definition of the view method here, and then if we go to the definition of the view result, you can see that the view result derives from the action result. And then if we go further, the definition of the action result class, it actually implements the I action result. Let's come back. So any action method can return an I action result because this is basically an abstract of all of the possible return types because all possible return types implement this interface. So you can always use I action result as the return type, but inside the function, you are going to return a specific action result that actually implements this interface. So the main purpose of this video is to show you how to create a view and how to return a view just like this. And then your HTML goes into the reader view file over here. Inside the reader view file, you can see that you're really dealing with real HTML. It's no longer just a string like what we did before. Right? So it's this more manageable, easier to program with. Now in this course, we are going to create a supermarket management system where we have different products to sell in the supermarket. Each product belongs to a category. For example, different drinks belongs to the category of beverage. Vegetables would be belong to the category of vegetable. So therefore, I want to create a categories page that shows a list of categories, which is going to serve as the starting location for managing categories. So therefore, before we finish this video, let's use what we learned to create the categories page. And for that, we can start by creating the controller. So let's add a new controller and let's add an empty controller and let's name the controller categories. And usually what is suggested is that we use plural form of English word, right? So instead of category controller, we say categories controller. And then over here, we have this index action method. And now what we need to do is to add a view, right? We're not displaying data yet. We just create a static view first. So right click on the indexed action method, click on add view, and then click on add here. Just make sure that this name corresponds to the action method name. And then you notice that this categories folder is just created and this view is created. I'm going to copy what we have over here and paste it in the categories index page. And here I'm going to say categories and I don't want to use H1. I want to use H3. And here I'm just going to say we are going to display categories here. So I'm not going to display it yet. We are going to follow through the lessons and eventually uh, categories will be displayed over here. And if we run this application right now, can you tell me how to navigate to categories page. So we're going to do categories, which is the name of the controller. And then we're going to do index, which is the name of the action method. And I'm going to hit enter right now. And you can see categories and we are going to display categories over here. So let me magnify this. You can see it clearly. So another way to load this page is by not specifying the action method. Because by default, if you don't specify it, index action method will be triggered. So you can see that I can still see the page. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video, and I will see you in the next one.